Well, here we are. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We're back here on the Thursday. Can you believe it's already Thursday again? Yeah, it's Thursday. Um, oh, but today in Switzerland, we can go into the stores with no mask on. <laughs> I tell you what, when you pray for your government, God begins to move. His, their heart is in his hands and he can turn their heart any way he wants. So we thank God that we have uh, freedom today to go shopping without masks. There are some uh, few restrictions still out there, but they also will pass. They will pass away also. So we thank God for the small victories in that area, but there'll be more. Amen. Today we're going to be talking, and if you don't know, my name is Pastor Curtis, coming in you, coming to you all the way from Zurich, Switzerland. And we welcome everyone here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are teaching a series uh, that God put on my heart 
uh, about the glory of God. Amen. So um, we'll be teaching a series on every Thursday, unless there's something that uh, that uh, where we can meet on a Thursday or so. We'll always keep you guys informed. Amen. But I appreciate you guys uh, joining with us and helping us to uh, just grow in, in the things of God so we can be on the same page that he is on. Amen. And uh, part of that is, and as far as worship or the great harvest, part of that is, is worship and releasing the glory of God. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like um, there is a need, a major need, that the body of Christ get educated on the area of praise and worship because that will be the door and the gates that will release the glory of God and this great, great, great abundant harvest into the earth. Amen. And so uh, and, and we are in anticipation of that. But there are things that we must do or steps that we must take in order to get there. And part of that is the worship, praise and worship. I saw Dr. Kevin, uh, he uh, taught a class, uh, Kevin said I taught a class on uh, creative worship. I know that that was amazing because one year I taught a class on creative giving. And uh, of all the creative ways that God will give you to give, well, uh, the, Dr. Kevin w was speaking or teaching on creative worship. And this is all worship is done in the spirit. Amen. This Even the creative giving, it's something that it birthed in the spirit realm because these ideals are not your normal everyday ideals to give somebody something you know like we just received a letter from a pastor who we uh, my wife and I decided to give them I mean we could that was just a, a, a single person who bought a house well we couldn't pay for their whole mortgage but we just said hey we want to send you a, just a small amount every month to help pay for your mortgage. And we did it for about, maybe about two years or so. And they just wrote a letter saying, oh, you want to thank you for, uh, she wrote a letter saying that we want to thank you for helping us a little bit with the, the mortgage. Well, um, that's creative giving. That ideal came from God. Uh, sometimes you can't pay the whole thing, but pay something. It's a blessing to them, amen? Hallelujah. So uh, in creative worship, uh, it's all in the spirit also. Amen. And God God is going to have a people. He said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And that's where we have to get to, where we can praise God for the things that we need without always asking, 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 praying, 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 praying. I mean, we are conditioned for prayer and prayer requests. Um, uh, this is um, something that we just automatically were taught to do, so we all, all, we, all we do is pray, 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 or make uh, requests, uh, petitions, asking God to do this and do that and do that, and it could be uh, so many prayers that we pray a day, but uh, we don't worship, we don't thanksgiving, we don't do those things that the scripture says we should do. So therefore those blessings or those petitions that we have are, don't seem to get answered or even at a pace that we think they should be. Um, uh, it's too slow, it's where's God, is he moving? Um, my question to you is, are you thanking? Are you praising him? Are you worshiping him? Amen, that releases the blessings that you need even quicker, amen? when you worship him. How do I know? Because Paul and Silas prayed and, not just prayed, and sang praises and the earthquake came, okay? And Jehoshaphat sent the, wor the worshipers out before the army and as they begin to sing praises, the Lord set ambush. So there's always something that God did after the praise, after the worship. And that's where we need to get to, a place where we worship Him and praise Him and thank Him. Um, a place where you um, you get into the presence of God and all of a sudden, God's presence overwhelms you. And it overwhelms you so much that you literally forget the reason why you came into His presence. 
um, all of those 10 things on your prayer list, they all disappear. And because you're so caught up in the presence of God, you're so caught up in the glory that the thing that you thought was so, so, so important literally disappears. I, I remember Brother Hagin telling the story, one, one of the stories is he saw Jesus uh, uh, eight times. Um, and one of the times he saw Jesus, he, um, he said to, uh, to, to Jesus, you know, it's so good to see you. And Jesus wanted to say, communicate something to him that he wanted the body of Christ to know. And Brother Hagin said, I had, before you know, Jesus appeared, I had a million things that was, I wanted to ask Jesus. But when I got in his presence, all those things I wanted to ask him disappeared. They never even came into my mind. All I kept thinking about is what he said to me, what he wanted me to say. But I had no, my mind could not think of any questions to ask him because I was so caught up in his presence. And if we get caught up in his presence, and that's what happened, well, one of the things happened to Enoch, he was caught up in his presence and you don't want to come back because all your problems are so insignificant, so small, so um, irrelevant to life when you think about in comparison with the Father, with Jesus, with God the Father, with the glory, with the presence of God. There is a reason why his word says, in his presence is fullness of joy because there's no worries, there's no bills. There's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no lack. Amen, there's no heartache, there's no pain, there's no taxes, no bills. You're in the presence of the Lord. It's full of the joy there. It's all joy, all joy, full. It's not 75% uh, joy, 15% joy. Fullness of joy, fullness of joy at thy right hand, pleasures forevermore. Amen. This is the God we serve and this is what he wants us to have. Hallelujah. So um, when we get in his presence, man, things just fall off. Things just come off your, out of your mind. Things just work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They just work. And that's what he wants for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, when you go in his presence and, and all of a sudden you stop, you stop thinking about what to ask him. You just bask in his presence, and then he comes to you, and he says, was there something that you wanted to ask me? Is there, why are you here? Is there something that you wanted to ask me? And you say, no, Lord, no questions, no requests, no petitions. Everything is satisfied since I've been in your presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything's taken care of. Praise the Lord. Because in your presence is fullness of joy. Uh, it, I, I, I even forgot what I was going to ask you. Because in this presence, oh man, what a joy. What a satisfaction. What a fulfillment. Amen. And that presence, uh, being in the presence of God, when you sense that, you, you want to go back. You want to run back again and again and again. Hallelujah. I told the story, and some of you guys may remember, but when I was dating my wife, um, I had a job in America. I was a, a, a welder. I used to weld metal. And, and this was a, a job that was pretty much demanding because it was always lifting these heavy uh, metal pipes and welding them together and cutting and all these things, all metals. It was just a metal shop. And... I would go to work, I would get up around 5.30 and go to work and come home around 4, run, uh, run home, drive home, and um, this is when I was dating my wife, and then I would take a shower and I would go over to her house. And I would go over there until 11 p.m. and just enjoy her presence, just be with her. And then in the morning, I'd get up again, 5.30, and do it all over again. And then you say to yourself, man, where are you getting all these energy? Because you're spending all that time working, and then you have another four or five hours at her house, and uh, you keep doing this, and keep doing it, and keep doing this. It. It's, it's this this tiredness, this weariness, this uh, being um, exhausted, all disappeared when I saw her. I, I it it 
I never thought about, oh, I'm tired. I worked eight hours. I'm tired. Da, da, da. No. Uh, all of that disappeared. Why? I was in her presence. Her presence gave me fuel. Her presence gave me energy. Her presence gave me uh, excitement when I first started dating my wife. Yes. And that's how it is with God. You go into his presence and man, all of the tiredness, all of the weariness, all of the fear, all of the anxiety, all of the pain, all of the bad memories, they just disappear in his presence. Amen. And you say, yeah, but when I go, when I, I'm done praying and I go back to my normal routine, then what do I do? Go, go back into his presence again. Amen. You can go as often as you want to. There's no time limit. You're not on the clock. You can go into his presence anytime you want to. Amen. And you don't have to um, have a set place or time. You can do it uh, uh, while you're washing dishes or while you're cooking dinner, whatever, whatever you're doing. You can still do that and communicate with him. That's worship. It's 24-7. Worship, 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 24-7. Amen. So when you're in his presence and he'll say to you, hey, uh, did you want something? Uh, is that why you're here? And you say, Father, I, I, everything, I don't remember anything. I'm just so glad I could be in your presence. Amen. And it's amazing because when you're in his presence, he begins to, he begins to show you what's his priority. And I mean, because when, when you come to God's presence, you have your, you know, the top five things that you want him to take care of. And then you go into his presence, you begin to worship him. And then he rearranged your top five and puts his top five up there. Just, he says, uh, you, your t number one is taking care of this. And God says, but my number one is that you take care of this. And my number two is this. And you say, but Lord, my number two. He says, nope, nope, nope. I want you to do my number one. I want you to follow my list, okay? Put all of those things aside and follow my list. And you say, but... Yeah, but what about uh, such and such? They did me wrong. And he says, you take care of my list and I'll take care of your list, okay? I want you to prioritize what I prioritize. I want my one to be your one and my two to be your two. And I'm not going to be, I'm not coming on your side. You come to me. I mean, when you let God talk to you, uh, he will rearrange your life. He will rearrange your priority list. What you think is important may not be what God thinks is important. Amen. And he'll let you know. And, you, and, and you're going to know when you spend time in his presence, he is just going to communicate, communicate to you clearly what his list is. Amen. Uh, he'll, he'll say, this is priority. This is not a priority. This needs to be done. This doesn't need to be done. Amen. And we learn to follow that. It's going to be so much easier for you. Uh, God will let us know, um, you, you yourself, you may be concerned about a job or marriage or maybe you're concerned about uh, 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 something you think is important, but in God's mind, it's on the bottom of the list. You say, no, no, God, but no, this is important. He says, no, that's not what's important. If you, do, if you do the number one thing on my list, your number four thing may disappear. It may be taken care of by you just obeying God. I mean, all of this is coming from being in his presence. Amen. And so there's great change that comes um, when we begin to get in his presence and, and we become, listen to this, we become like him. We become like him. We are changed from glory to glory. We don't see like, like we see, like we saw before. We see differently our outlook changes our expectations change because we're in his presence amen hallelujah i mean get excited about worshiping god and praising god when you're worshiping when you worship god you look to his face you look into his face and you are changed from glory to glory and that's all you know i think we all want change all of us want change we want to be changed we don't want to stay the same. We don't want to be where we were yet last week or yesterday. We want to be different. We want to grow. Hallelujah. In the grace and knowledge of God. Let's look at the scripture here. First Chronicles uh, chapter uh, 28. First Chronicles 28 verse 2. And it says this, Then David the king stood up upon his feet and he said, Hear me, my brethren and my people, 
As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and has made ready for the building. So David's building the footstool. <laughs> it would be a footstool that this sanctuary would be a footstool for God where he could just lay his feet, where he could just rest his feet. Amen. And uh, so David had in his heart to build that. Um, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. Amen. And a place of worship is the footstool. Understand that. The place of worship is the footstool of the Lord. And I want to look at another uh, Psalms here in Psalms 132, uh, 132, verse 7. It says, we will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Amen. And so when we go uh, to the presence of the Lord, it's like we are bowing down at his feet, at his feet and worshiping him and worshiping him and worshiping him and thanking him because that's why we're uh, created. God wanted the family and fellowship, family and fellowship, family and fellowship. He wanted us to worship him. And that's what we need to start doing more of and less asking. Amen. And, and be reminded every service, sure, every service needs praise and worship. But we praise until the spirit of worship comes. And then we worship until the glory comes. And we mentioned that last week. Praise brings an increase of the anointing. What, what, what is it that destroys yokes? What is it that destroys burdens and yokes and breaks them and uh, causes them to be gone? It's the anointing, amen? So uh, you, you notice in Sunday services in your church or, or our church, wherever, whatever church, when the anointing is strong, you can feel it in your hands. You can feel it in your, on your flesh. You can feel it on your lips. Some people's lips begin to shake. You feel the power. Some people fall down. You feel the power of God. You feel that because it's real. It's a tangible power of God. It's like electricity. You feel that. You can't see it. You can't see electricity. But let me tell you, you can feel it. You can feel it if you got shocked. Amen. So in the presence of God, that's where all this great, great anointing is. And the anointing destroys Every yoke of bondage, the, the anointing destroys bondage. The anointing destroys bondage. The anointing destroys bondage. Amen. So if you feel like you're in bondage, that presence of God, the anointing of God can and will destroy that. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, listen, when we talk about praise and we talk about worship, uh, there's two aspects of this or two ways to look at this and one is that praise is usually more exorbitant or more words when we praise we use more words we use it's more fiery more exciting more upbeat you could say but worship is a different thing worship is a like a holy silence it's it's awesome it's less words sometimes it's even without any words you just lift your hands, lifting up holy hands, not saying anything, just worship. Hallelujah. Holy all, as we can call it. Sometimes in total silence, we can pour out our hearts to God. Total silence, we can pour out our hearts towards God. Amen. Let's look at the Psalms here. Psalms 24, 7 says this, through 7 through 10. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty, strong in battle. The Lord mighty, strong in battle. Strong in battle. Strong in battle. The battle's not yours, but the Lord's. Strong in battle. Verse 9, lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. 
Who is this King of glory? Good question. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this. When we praise Him and when we worship Him, He comes in. That's what it says. It says, um, um, lift Him up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. King of glory may come in. Where? When we worship Him, when we praise Him, He comes in. He inhabits the praises of His people. He comes in your marital problem. He comes in your bank account. He comes in your children uh, situation, child situation. He comes in your circumstances when we lift Him up. And when He comes in, who is He? He is mighty in battle. The Lord our Almighty, Almighty. Praise just opens up the door so He can come in. Come in. If you want to say, Jesus, come in, then start praising Him. Yes. If you want Him to start uh, coming into your situation, into your circumstances, you need Him to fix something. You want Him to come in your problems. Then praise Him. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. And He will come in. Amen. Because as long as you, as long as you have these problems and circumstances and situations, He's not coming in yet. He's not in yet. He's not in. But man, we know He came into the prison where Paul and Silas was. We know He went through the, to, to the, to the uh, ambushers where Jehoshaphat was. He came in. He came in. We know He came in. The, the, the fiery furnace with Meshach Abednego uh, um, and, and, and the other one. <laughs> we know he came in. The lion's den with Daniel. He came in. He came in. When you lift him up, he comes in. And lifting him up is praise and lifting him up is worship. Hallelujah. We know he came in when Peter was, was chained to the soldiers about to be beheaded that night. He came in. Oh, he came in. Let's look at this again. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting excited now. He came in. This is uh, um, uh, Psalms 24, 7. Let's look at it. Lift up the heads. Uh, lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors. That the king of glory, my what? May come in. And that's what we need. We need him to come in our situations. We need him to come in our circumstances. We need him to come in our bank account. We need him to come in our bodies to heal. We need him to come in our minds so we can remember. We need him to come in our eyes so we can see greater. Amen. Hallelujah. We know him as Savior. We know him as the healer. That, that's something that we know because we've been teaching that. We know him as the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. We know that. We know him as the provider. We know him as Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. And we know him in other ways, right? Now it's time to know him as the King of glory. King of glory. Every experience in God has one purpose, and that purpose is to know Him. Hallelujah. Now, I haven't seen an amen. I haven't seen a thumbs up. I haven't seen anything in a while. Can somebody out there give the pastor some fuel? Somebody out there, give me a thumbs up. Hallelujah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 1. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. It says this. Verse 17, in the presence of a king, there is great sense of majesty and awe. Amen. So in the presence of a king, there's great sense of majesty and awe. And this is what, what the scripture says here. When I saw him, when I saw Jesus, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth 
and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. Have keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go right here directly to 1 Peter 2. And it says this. Ye are a chosen people. Oh, hallelujah. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. Imagine that. You are God's special possession. Yes, he don't just uh, not value you. He values you. It's God's special possession that you may declare the praise, what? That I may declare the praises of him. My job is to declare the praises of him. That's right. That's your job, to declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into light. Your job is, our job is to declare the praises of him. Father, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I declare my praises to you. I declare my worship to you. I declare my thanksgiving to you. Hallelujah. Isn't that good to know? Praise the Lord. The King of glory deserves a chosen generation. The king of glory deserves a royal priesthood. The king of glory deserves a holy nation. Hallelujah. He deserves, the king of glory deserves a peculiar people. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when you begin to embark on this walk with God and endeavor to know uh, more and more about worship, it's, it's a progression. You start. Now, I want you to listen to me closely. And you see this in the scriptures. But it, when you begin to learn to worship the Lord or worship the Father, worship Jesus, it's a progression. You, you will start at his feet. You will start at his feet. Because he's so holy, you just can't just look straight up into his eyes. Um, um, and even... It's such a, a, an awe that even men have worshipped angels um, thinking that they are holy, and the angels have to say, hey, I'm not holy. Well, if men were inclined to worship angel and fall down at an angel, we know that Cornelius did that. Uh, Cornelius fell down at the feet of Peter um, when, he, when he was the first Gentile. When you um, um, are inclined to worship an angel or men, imagine how inclined you would be to worship Jesus. And you would surely start at his feet. And you would worship him. And um, uh, through time, you would get higher and higher and higher. And it's through more and more and more time of doing this, learning to worship, learning to be in his presence, you will get to the place ultimately where you can just look him in the eyes and not be ashamed, and not be fearful, and not believe you're unworthy, and not believe that um, 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 I don't deserve this, you will know that you are seated with him in heavenly places, eyeball to eyeball. But in the beginning, you will have to start at bowing down to him. Amen. And you will, we will always bow to him. But I'm saying, in, in, in this sense, when you come to the Lord, you can come to him and you don't have this fear or this intimidation. You don't have this um, uh, feeling of unworthiness. No, his blood made you worthy. Amen. You are a royal priesthood. You have a right to be there because he told you to come. Amen. Hallelujah. So you, you learn that as your faith increases in the worship, you'll go higher and higher and higher, and soon you're looking him in the eyes with pure, pure, pure worship, pure praise. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants to take us from glory to glory, uh, to go further and further, amen, in him. That's what he wants. He wants us to know him, not only as a king, but as 
a heavenly bridegroom. Amen. He wants us to know him as, as the beloved lover of our soul. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, I will never let you go. You taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock. That's right. And now I know, yes, that I love you and you love me. Amen. And I worship you so freely. I worship you from the bottom of my heart to the tips of my uh, toes, to my fingers, to my head. I love you all over. Amen. So we got to be a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we worship God, we pour out our hearts to him. Amen. And we pour out our love to him. Now, here's what I want to focus on before we stop right now is this. Um, when you're in a Sunday morning service, don't clam up. You know what I mean by clam up? Don't resist this urge to lift your hands. Don't resist the urge to say hallelujah. Don't resist the urge, if God leads you that way, to dance. Don't resist the urge to sing loud. We stymie the Spirit of God. When I say stymie, we um, hold back what we are really feeling like doing. We really feel like worshiping. We really feel like lifting our hands. We really feel like dancing. But because people are watching us and, and we are so concerned about other people, we are, in, 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 we are in, inhibited from free flowing worship, free flowing worship. You come into our church service in our church, you will notice that the pastor, he don't care who looks at him, what he does, how loud he sings, how good he sings, how bad, I don't care. I'm not going to be inhibited to worshiping God because of people around me. Not going to happen. Amen. And that's the attitude you must have. And that's the attitude David had when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines. David was so happy after, after this Ark was at Obed-Eden's house, if you remember the story. For three months, Obed-Eden had the Ark, and finally they um, made the arrangements to bring it into Jerusalem. And David was so happy. Why was he so happy? Because in the presence of the Lord, it's fullness of joy at the right hand, pleasures forevermore. Amen. So quit suppressing that leading of the Holy Spirit, that desire that your spirit has to commune with God, to praise him on Sunday. You know why? You know why people are intimidated to do that? in public because they don't do it at home. If you did this at home, you're going to automatically do it in public. You're not going to have to worry, and you're not even going to worry about who's looking at you and who's saying what. You don't even care. You do this at home. The uh, Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Amen. So don't stymie that leading of the Spirit. Don't allow your spirit man to go home saying, I wish I opened up more. I wish I opened up more. Amen. When the power of the Holy Spirit comes or blows across you in the service, you should respond to that. How do you respond? Well, do what it, your flesh says, what, what it wants to do. The, respond how your flesh wants to respond. Holler, jump, shout, lift your hands, say hallelujah. Sing louder. Whatever the response your flesh uh, allows, do that. But don't just clam up, hold it back. Oh, I really want to, I really want to, but I just can't. I'm so embarrassed. Get over that embarrassment. You were created to worship. You were created to praise him. That's what you need to do. Amen. You need to let your mouth become the pen of a ready writer and let, pour out your soul to your God. Pour out your soul to your God. Yes, it starts at home. Practice at home. And when you come to the service, it's so much easier because it's natural. 
is what you do at home is what you do here. Amen. And with that, the pastor is signing off. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow night, Friday night, we have a praise and worship service. We call it the Believers Meeting. And you can come and we have an excellent praise and worship leader. Uh, great music. He, he's going to be here tomorrow night. We want all of you guys to come uh, if you are in our area and worship with us. And those nights are always, we do it once a month. Those nights are always, always, always so special. And it's a fact that every time we do this, the Lord comes. The King of Glory comes in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God Almighty, the Lord strong in battle. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He is God. That's who this King of Glory is. God bless you. Take your praise off the shelf. Take your praise off the shelf. Take your thanksgiving out of the closet and begin to get involved. That's why you created why you were created. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.